I love this recipe. In fact, Jonathan Gold, uh, the famous LA food writer, felt this was one of his all-time favorite dishes. As soon as that paste hits the hot rice, the aromas just come out and it's so, so fresh. A lot of sauces are very, you know, front of your tongue and light and I don't like the word mm -hmm. zesty, but this is deep and rich and, mm -hmm. right? It's kind of like a paella, but brothier. Super easy, very yummy. Here we go. I was recently in Los Angeles and I discovered that many chefs are opening restaurants in their own backyards. So I went to 106 Seafood Underground and found one of LA's most famous recipes called Drunken Shrimp or Camarones Barachos. It's made by seafood chef Sergio Penuelas using a really simple tequila-based sauce. Plus we demonstrate cilantro rice and then a Veracruz style rice and shrimp. So please stay tuned. Funding for this series was provided by the following. That meal. You sauteed, you seared, and you served. Cooking with Allclad. Bonded cookware designed, engineered, and assembled in the USA for over 50 years. Allclad. For all your kitchen adventures. All right, Chris, you're getting, the, you're getting the true LA experience right now. LA's wild. It's a real big city. There's street vending. There's, of course, restaurants. And now this is the other link in that chain. So we're about five minutes away from LAX, and this is a backyard restaurant. There's a chef here. His name is Sergio Peñuelas. He specializes in Sinaloan-style ceviches and grilled fish. Great. So uh, this, is, this, is, uh, this is as LA as it gets. Put some tables, put some nice plants, make it a little oasis. A little artificial turf, you're all set. Yeah. Chris? Sergio? Hola. Hola. Have you ever had Sinaloan style seafood? No. Oh never. man. Never. That's why I'm here. Okay. Hoy les va a hacer un pay de un pay de plátano estilo Vallarta. Quiero que tenga un borracho. El borracho cuál es que tiene ese? Tequila. Ready to try your first bite of backyard ceviche and backyard uh, backyard ceviche. That's it. This is, this is uh, in LA. Anything goes, man. Ceviche should always be very simple. You know that, right? It just, shouldn't be sitting in lime juice for three hours. Exactly. You see, whenever you get ceviche, the shrimp should always be a little bit gray. Which, when it's all the way pink, that means that it's been sitting in the lime juice for a huh. while. Sergio, what, what's the secret to a good uh, to a good uh, good ceviche? The secret, the passion. The passion. Mm. That's really good. This dish was beloved by my mentor, may he rest in peace, Jonathan Gold. He called Sergio the, the, snook, the snook whisperer, which, you know, snook is a kind of fish that's really hard to find in LA. Gotta hit it with lime, always. And then, last but not least, get a little bit of this uh, amazing aguachile. This is LA seafood in a bite. Cheers. Mm. Mm. That's really good. Esto que es? Son los camarones borrachos. ¿Qué tienen? Fresh garlic, crushed pepper, cilantro, and tequila. Think of it as a Mexican scampi with a little little shot of tequila to, to, to liven it up a little bit. Mmm. Whoa. That's good. That's really good. So I went to LA recently 
And uh, two friends of mine took me around. This is uh, Javier Cabral, who uh, edits LA Tacos, and his wife, Paola Brezano Gonzalez, who's also a food writer. And we tasted a lot of tacos from taco trucks. At the end of the day, however, we went to an underground restaurant. That means a restaurant in someone's backyard. This one was called 106 Seafood Underground. Now the chef is very well known, Sergio Penuelas. He's a very well known seafood cook at lots of restaurants around LA, but he opened his own place with his wife uh, and we went in the backyard, it was huge. There was like a dozen picnic tables. It was a boom box, there were lights. He had a sort of a shed shack in the middle where he did his cooking. And one of the things we had was camarones borrachos, which is drunken shrimp. I love this recipe. In fact, Jonathan Gold, uh, the famous LA food writer, felt this was one of his all time favorite dishes. It's also incredibly simple. So it starts with like a lot of recipes with oil uh, and butter, three tablespoons of each. And we're gonna cook uh, a little garlic, six cloves. Now, when I cook garlic, I don't add it to hot oil. Um, I put it in with a cold oil. I'll do the same thing with onions. And that way, if the oil's a little too hot, the garlic doesn't hit the pan and burn right away. So I start it right like this. So we'll cook that for two or three minutes until the garlic, uh, you can smell the garlic, uh, and it has a nice golden color. So let's start with the shrimp. We have two pounds of 2125s. They are 21 to 25 per pound. They're, they're quite large. A little bit of lime juice goes in. Just toss that. Now, you'll notice a lot of times, especially in Mexican cooking, they leave the heads on of shrimp, which are hard to find. Um, but we do like to leave the tails on. But the heads, especially if you're cooking them in a sauce, actually add some flavor. Uh, a little salt, half teaspoon, we'll let that sit. Meanwhile, we'll get ready for the next step, which is uh, we have tequila. Uh, you don't want the aged uh, or the reposado, the rested. You want a nice, clean, clear tequila because you want that nice, clean taste. So we're adding it to some water, two parts water, one part tequila. So now we'll add the tequila water mixture. Some red pepper flakes, um, of course. And then we'll add a teaspoon of kosher salt and a quarter teaspoon of uh, black pepper. We're gonna simmer this down uh, till it gets nice and concentrated. Then the shrimp go in and just cook for two or three minutes. So we're reducing the sauce down to about two thirds of a cup. Um, and meanwhile, we're gonna take a cucumber. We're just gonna use half of it. And just very thin slices. And we'll put those on the shrimp when they're cooked. Now, the question is, very often recipes say, reduce sauce till it's half a cup, or in this case, two thirds of a cup. And you can actually use a measuring cup and pour the liquid in and pour it back. Uh, but if you wanna do it by eye, uh, just tilt the pan up like this and you get a pretty good sense about how much liquid is there. So this looks like it's a little more than two thirds of a cup. Give it another minute or two. Okay, I think we're good to go. So now the shrimp go in. So you don't want to overcook the shrimp, it's about three minutes. If you have the shells on, as they often do uh, in a Mexican restaurant, it'd be about five minutes. But you know, I, I wouldn't go by timing. Uh, it depends how hot your skillet is, how big your skillet is. Uh, you just want it opaque. Uh, shouldn't be translucent. So the shrimp are now just opaque, uh, ready to go. Turn the heat off. Uh, we'll put in a little bit of the cilantro here. Now that's, um, that's pretty much how uh, he served it. Serio served it at his restaurant, 106 Seafood Underground, a big platter of shrimp. Um, and now we have some things to put on top of it. We have the cucumbers. So then also some onion. And we're gonna finish with a little bit of uh, cilantro leaves. And then uh, a squeeze or eight of lime. <laughs> It's always nice at the end. So a really easy shrimp dish, but with tons of flavor. 
So camarones borrachos or drunken shrimp. Serio served this as a big platter with a bunch of other things. Um, you could certainly do this as a meze, as a small platter to start, uh, or you know, serve it with rice, uh, whatever, and make it the, the main course. Mm. So when a dish is simple, you know, and it has complex flavors at the same time, uh, tequila, the red pepper flakes, the garlic, the butter, uh, that's the holy grail, right, uh, of being in the kitchen when you get both of those things together. So drunken shrimp really is that recipe. Uh, give it a shot, it takes only 15 minutes. Making a simple pot of rice isn't difficult. Making it flavorful shouldn't be either. The solution is a boldly flavored herb paste. Now, any sort of combination of herbs, oil, acid, and salt would definitely bump up an otherwise run-of-the-mill bowl of plain grains into a side that's worthy of its own meal. We're taking flavor inspiration from Eros Verde, which we find in Latin American cuisine. It's long grain white rice that has cilantro going all the way throughout it. And it's a beautiful side, and we're gonna make our little take on it right now. So here I have a cup and a half of long grain white rice. We'll throw that into a medium saucepan, along with two cups of water. And of course, we'll follow that up with a little bit of salt. So we'll bring this mixture up to a simmer over high heat. And as soon as it starts to bubble, we'll crank that heat down to low, pop a lid on it, and let that rice cook for about 15 to 20 minutes or until all the water is absorbed. Now, while we bring that up to a simmer, let's go ahead and make that herbaceous paste. We're going to throw into our blender here some water to make sure that all of our ingredients get blended up nice and smooth. We'll also throw in some cilantro. This is the whole bit of cilantro, not just the leaves, but also the stems. There's plenty of flavor in there. We'll follow that up with some scallions, just to give it a little bit of an allium savory bite. Some jalapenos for a nice fresh pop of piquant heat. Some garlic, because adding a little bit more garlic to this sauce is just gonna make it even more savory. And finally, some oil, just to give it some lusciousness. Almost forgot a little bit of salt. So from here, we'll go ahead and blend this until it's smooth. All right, that blended up really easy for me, but if you run into any issues with your blender, you could add in water a teaspoon at a time until you reach this nice smooth consistency. And in that time, my rice has already come up to a boil, so we'll go ahead and reduce that down to low We'll pop a lid on it and let it cook for 15 to 20 minutes. All right, it's been 20 minutes. The rice is completely cooked, but a little extra thing that you can do is throw a towel on between the lid and the pot itself. That way that towel can absorb all that excess moisture and that rice won't become mushy. This whole thing's been sitting for five minutes, so it's ready to go. We could go ahead and pull that towel and the lid off. Before we add in our puree, we wanna go ahead and just give it a nice gentle fluff. And it's at this point, you'll see putting that towel on top really helped keep each grain individual without turning into a paste. Okay, so now we could go ahead and throw in our puree. As soon as that paste hits the hot rice, the aromas just come out and it's so, so fresh. We'll go ahead and give that a stir just to get that paste over each and every piece of rice in this pot. Now, as always, we like to throw in just a little bit of acidity right before we serve. So we're throwing in just a little bit of lime juice to brighten things up. Now, of course, before I plate this up, I do want to give it a little taste just in case it needs a little extra salt. Mm. It's good. So now we can go ahead and plate up. And finally, one last hit of fresh lime juice. Now this is a phenomenal side that would go great with any Mexican dish, or honestly, those drunken shrimp that Chris made it would go perfect with that. But you could easily make this its own meal simply by putting a fried egg on top. 
That's the beauty of cilantro rice. I mean, salsa matcha is really one of my favorite salsas, and I think it throws people for a, you know, a loop because, you know, when we think salsa, we think of a fresh salsa, right? Like tomatoes, or maybe like, you know, a salsa that's like, you know, slightly pan fried for enchiladas, that kind of thing. But there's also, you know, uh, salsa matcha, which is oil based. And uh, matcha means brave. So this was traditionally like super, super, super spicy. And, you know, and you only needed like a couple of drops, and that was enough to, you know, to, to get you. And the costeña part of this salsa, you know, what makes it, you know, unique to the region where I'm from are the cacao nibs. So this is, a, you know, an addition that you will see a lot with grilled seafood. So, you know, you will have it over a butterfly fish like sarandeado, you know, like a grilled fish or grilled seafood. And it just, you know, adds a really, really nice dad to it. So, Chrissy, you cook much with the dry chiles? I do. When I was in Oaxaca, I got a chili education. Yeah. Chili de agua and, and the, oh, uh, love which those. I love those. Yeah. And, and guajillos. But you know, I, I didn't understand that chilies were about their fruity flavor. Mm -hmm. I always thought it was about heat. Because mm. most places I've been, they people use use it just to have heat. Yeah. Um, and then I realized it was like everything else, it was about flavor. Yeah. And um, some of them are hot and some of them really are not hot mm -hmm. at all. Yeah. Yeah, and some of them are just, you know, their value for their bitterness. So, it, you know, it all adds like a really complex flavor to sauces and moles. The thing I like about this is very gentle. Mm -hmm. you, you, you're not over toasting anything. Right. Yeah, and you can see that the chiles are now a little bit puffy mm -hmm. and, um, you know, all of the nuts really are like really beautiful brown and um, at this point we're going to, you know, turn off the heat and just going to add some, some oregano and again, all of this is going to the food processor so we don't have to be, you know, exact or perfect here. You can leave it super chunky. There's actually some salsa matches that are whole nuts. Hmm. So, you know, you just pulverize the chile and the chile is like round and then you add whole nuts. So really like you can do whatever you prefer here. I, I like it, you know, kind of in the middle. Chris, I just made some quick shrimp here for so that we can Taste it. I'm just gonna drizzle some of the salsa match and I'm just going at the bottom so that I get some of those nice bits. So we're using forks for this? Or just you don't have to. I think you can just pick it yeah, up. Who's gonna use a fork? We've been hanging a lot with our hands. Mm. Wow. A lot of salsas are very, you know, front of your tongue and light and I don't like the word mm -hmm. zesty, but this is deep and rich and mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, in, ba in Vallarta and really all over the coast and you know, on the west coast in Mexico, we this goes great with some sarandeado, some grilled fish, and you know, mm. with shrimp. So such that a simple thing, delicious. you know. Delicious. Yeah, it just it's so good and it's so different, um, and it's just is is deep. Yeah. No, oh, like yeah. you're cooking. It's deep. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. I'm going to show you a one-pot weeknight version of Arroz a la Tumbada, a seaside classic from Veracruz, Mexico. It's kind of like a paella, but brothier. Super easy, very yummy. Here we go. I'm gonna start with my shrimp. Add some salt. And pepper. Now, while that sits, I'm going to turn to my onions. And a little bit of salt. 
And I'm gonna cook these for about five minutes until they're softened. So while my onions continue to soften, I'm going to move to my cilantro. This is an interesting part of this recipe. We're going to use the cilantro stems. They have lots of flavor. We don't want to waste them. So I'm reserving the leaves for later. And I'm going to chop the stems. So my onions have softened. I'm going to add some jalapeno. Some tomato paste. and those reserved cilantro stems. I'm going to continue cooking this for another five to seven minutes until the onions are browned. Right, my onions have browned. I'm going to add long grain rice. It's been rinsed, in it goes. Some broth. and a little bit extra salt. I'm gonna give that a stir, and then I'm going to bring this to a simmer, cover it, and let it cook for about 15 to 17 minutes. So my rice is done cooking, and now is a crucial step. I'm about to add my shrimp. Add the shrimp ready, I'm gonna take off the lid, and in it goes, very quickly. I'm just distributing it in an even layer across the top. So my shrimp is in an even layer over the top. I'm gonna to move my pot off heat. And it's gonna take about 10 minutes for the shrimp to cook in the residual heat of the pot. While that happens, I'm gonna chop my cilantro leaves. So I'm going to give the shrimp a few more minutes so that they fully finish cooking. They need to be opaque when they're done and then we'll come right back. So my shrimp has been sitting for 10 minutes in this pot off heat. Let's find out what happens. It's beautifully cooked, all pinked up. I'm going to add some lime zest in here. So when you're zesting a lime, here's a great tip. You kind of roll the lime in a long sweep across the grater, and this helps you get the zest without the pith. So if you do it aggressively back and forth, you're gonna get more bitter pith and less of the zest. Okay, I've added my lime zest, and I'm gonna give this a stir. Okay, my rice is done, and I'm going to serve myself some. I'm gonna serve this with some cilantro, some jalapeno rounds for a little extra heat, and a little squeeze of lime. So here it is, arroz a la tumbada, Veracruz style shrimp and rice. I am so excited to taste this. That is really satisfying. It's like chicken soup for the soul, but with way more flavor. Very, very yummy. So easy. I would cook this in a heartbeat on a weeknight for my kid, for myself. Highly recommend this. You can get this recipe and all the recipes from this season at MilkStreetTV.com. All episodes and recipes from this season of Milk Street Television are available for free at our website, MilkStreetTV.com. Please access our content, including our step-by-step -step recipe videos, from your smartphone, your tablet, or your computer. The new Milk Street Cookbook is now available and includes every recipe from our TV show. From fried shrimp tacos and Thai-style vegetable stir-fry to Mexican chicken soup and Swedish cardamom buns, the Milk Street Cookbook offers bolder, fresher, simpler recipes. Order your copy of the Milk Street Cookbook for $27, 40% less than the cover price, and receive a Milk Street tote with your order at no additional charge. Call 855-MILK-177 or order online. 
Funding for this series was provided by the following. That meal. You sauteed, you seared, and you served. Cooking with Allclad. Bonded cookware designed, engineered, and assembled in the USA for over 50 years. Allclad. For all your kitchen adventures.